Right, so let's talk about fabric. If you've never made a swimsuit before, I can see that it can be a little bit intimidating to try and figure out, but it's actually a bit more straightforward than you might imagine. So let's start with the main fabric, so that's the outside. So what you're looking for is four-way spandex. It's very stretchy. It's at least 50% stretchy, but often it's like 200% stretchy. And it's usually made from nylon, polyester, or a blend of the two. So I've got a couple of examples here. Um, so you can get lots of like beautiful solid colors, which are really nice. So I think these two are particularly fun. Um, and you can see with the stretch, that they are extremely stretchy. A lot of them, if not most, are equally stretchy in both directions, which is quite nice actually, because if you have a print, it means you can use the print whichever way you like. If it's not equally stretchy in both directions, you want to have most of the stretch around your body. So think about that when you're cutting it out. If it's not identical, if it's identical stretch, it doesn't matter. But if it's not identical, use the higher level of stretch around your body because that's where it, the swimsuit needs to get bigger to fit on you. So you can get these kind of nice solids. Um, we also have many fun prints. Um, the one, there are a few things that you want to like bear in mind. So if you're using a print, I'd say solids, this is less of an issue. If you're using a print, a couple of things to bear in mind. One, color fastness. Now you would think that swimsuit fabric is all color fast in water. That would be a no brainer, right? Not always. Um, I have had experiences with some swimsuit where it wasn't and in water it was washing out. So it's always a good idea if you're buying online, for instance, to get a swatch and I would test that and I would put it in water and just check. The vast majority of the time it's fine, but it's always worth checking before you sew something for many hours. Another thing to bear in mind is called grin through. So if you're using a printed fabric and it's printed on a substrate that's lighter, so classically, for instance, let's say we take these polka dots, which we discovered have a bit of this, if it's a dark print on a white fabric, sometimes when it stretches, the white starts appearing in little lines. So it's not terrible, but you might be able to see in this one that if I really stretch it, it goes gray and not black. Now, to some extent, this is okay. Like if it's only stretching a little bit, you might be fine, but sometimes it's very dramatic. So you wanna check for that because you don't want something that suddenly changes color where it's pulling on you. The other thing is think about the pattern and whether it's gonna get warped when it stretches. So again, the polka dots is a good example of this actually. If this was very stretched on you, the polka dots actually stop being circular and they start being oval. Now, it wouldn't be stretched this much. It's probably only going to be stretched this much. So on the polka dots, it's probably okay, but on some patterns, it might start being problematic. So have a think about what you're doing um, and take that into consideration if you're picking a print. In terms of where to buy swimsuit fabric, it is increasingly becoming available for home sewists. If you're based in the US, Spandex House and Spandex World in New York have, I think, the largest selection. They have online uh, websites that you can go to and you can see, I mean, Spandex House, honestly, it's like quite entertaining, the kind of prints you can get, pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, so you can get lots and lots of fun things there. And they also have solids, which if you're color blocking or you wanna make a solid suit, you can get from there. They have a Spandex House ones, has one called Millie Skin Matte, which we've been using a lot, which is like a really great quality one. There are also other websites. Um, fabric Fairy often has swim fabric and a lot of the other big online fabric stores. So that's other ones to look at. If you're in the UK, um, Funky Fabrics, it's funky with an I, um, have a lot of swimsuit fabric. And there are other options like getting yours actually custom made. So if you look at Spoonflower, that's a custom fabric printing website and there are others in other countries and they actually have a sports lycra that works really well for swimsuits. It's kind of expensive, but you don't need very much, especially if you're color blocking. You actually need less than one yard, even for the biggest size with Spoonflower. And if you do that, you can have literally anything. You can pick from someone else's design or you can use your own. Cashmere actually has a shop on Spoonflower. Some of my fabric designs are on there. You can check them out, um, but there are lots and lots of options. So that's like really creative. It's a bit more of an investment. And then also we sell some kits. 
we are going to have um, blog posts that explain uh, how you can buy these fabrics and give lots of other listings. So I'd also encourage you to look at that. So that's the main fabric. So the next thing that we need is the lining inside. So this is literally just solder swimsuit lining. So you don't have to try and figure out what it is. Unlike with other clothes, you can't really just line it in the same fabric as the main. So, you know, if you're making a dress, sometimes you're like, oh, I'll just line it with the same fabric. That's fine. But swimsuit lining is a bit different. It's much thinner and it's a bit stretchier and it's made for this purpose. So it's typically 100% nylon. This is an example of beige swimsuit lining and it comes in basic colors. So this beige is really common. They do also have black. They sometimes have white. Um, I have read that if you're making a swimsuit that has large areas of white, blue is actually like optically the best color lining to use, like light blue, but it's really hard to come by. But if you see it, cool. So this is the swimsuit lining, 100% nylon, very, very stretchy. Now, now we're going to get to the bits that might seem a bit more intimidating, which is if you're making the bra, what are you going to use? So at the sides of the bra, you need to use power net. And this is the sides and also through the back. So this is the piece that's equivalent to the band on your bra. Power net is a really strong, but also flexible fabric. And this is what it looks like. So it comes in different colors. Um, we have a beige one here and a black and a white. It's usually four way stretch, but sometimes it has very minimal in the length, but it has more horizontally. And what happens is when it gets stretched, it almost looks like a mesh, like you can see through it. So it's not a solid. So it's called power net. It's sometimes called power mesh. Um, and this is really important. You want to get a high quality one because this is giving you a lot of the support. So we have a beige one, we have a black one, we have a white one. And really, I mean, it's up to you. It shouldn't, none of this should be showing through. But I would say, for instance, if you're making a suit that has a black background, well, why not use the black inside so that if it does stretch and there's a tiny bit of grin through, well, at least you have black behind it, which is nice. So this is power net and you only need a really small amount of it. All of the bra making fabrics, they're quite expensive, but you can you only need like a really small amount. So it's not too bad in the big scheme of things. So the central piece of the bra, which is the central frame, which is here, also called the bridge, you actually need a firm knot stretch. So the sides and the back are stretch, but this piece is not stretch. So there's two options really. The one is to use this, which is called duoplex. So this is a classic bra making uh, fabric. It doesn't stretch at all. It's firm and it's just like a good weight. So it's called duoplex. You also have another option, which is to use like bra lining like this. This is also not, it's like a tiny bit of mechanical stretch, but basically it's not stretch. You will find usually that you can get like rainbow colors of duoplex, there's a lot available. But if you want something that's a bit sheerer and a bit more sort of feminine, I guess, this kind of lining is nice. It's slightly harder to sew with. So if you're trying to like minimize like how challenging it is to sew, I would go with duoplex but bra lining is also an option. And then finally, in terms of fabric for the cups, you're going to need foam. Now, if you have a small bus, you can actually buy pre-made foam cups, but forget about it if you're a 38H. So we're gonna be making our own and actually it's extremely easy. So, and it's actually better because you can make them a bit more sh shaped. So this is the foam. It's sold usually as swimsuit foam, but you can also use bra foam you just want to make sure that it doesn't retain water. Um, so basically it's sandwiched. There's a little bit of fabric on the front and back usually. And then there's usually a neutral color foam in the middle and it doesn't stretch in the length on the grain, but it does stretch a little bit width way. So that's what you want. You don't want your bra. If you think about it, you don't want your bra to stretch this way because everything's going to go south but you're okay with it stretching around you a little bit because it's gonna like fit onto you well. So the most common bra foam, in fact, I'm actually not sure I've really seen it apart from in beige and white and black for swimsuit foam specifically. But if you look at bra foam, it's often available in like many other colors because basically they're covering it in different color fabrics. 
This is very expensive usually, but you only need a really small amount. So I would either, you know, buy a kit or I would see what supplier you can find that will sell it in like the smallest quantities. And people will often sell it for like eighth of a yard, quarter of a yard. You only need a little bit. And then you can be conservative when you're cutting out because you can make another swimsuit later. So these bra making fabrics are definitely a bit harder to source. My favorite place, and I buy almost everything from there, is Bra Makers Supply, which is a Canadian company, but they sell to the US, and generally I found it very efficient to buy things from them. I haven't had big bills, and they really have like almost everything. There are also other suppliers in the US, for instance, like So Sassy is a website that provides a lot of this. Um, Tailor Made Shop also often has some of this available. Um, there's one called Sweet Cups. And again, go to our website and search bra making suppliers and we will have a big list of where you can find these kind of things in different countries. So that's the fabric. Now let's look at the notions that you will need. 